Praise the Lord. Um, in today's ministration, we're going to have a conversation segment, and uh, I will be discussing or sharing with us why you should never mock a man of God. Why you should never mock a man of God. Praise God. Um, you know, sometimes most problems we encounter in life are inherited problems or invited problems due to uh, our utterances or our spoken words or our actions we you know we might have taken knowingly or unknowingly to hurt someone and uh, it is pertinent that I tell you the way God punishes <coughs> or rather judges his servants is different from how he judges <coughs> mere people like me and you you know I just want to put myself in that category so you can understand I'm not trying to you know kind of uh, exempt myself from this message so the way God judges his servants because the riskiest job on earth is pastoral work forget about what people you know make it to look like these days the most difficult and riskiest job is being a preacher of the gospel because as a child I used to think that being in the military is risky of course it's very risky they tend to save human lives the the military the difference between being a preacher and the military or in the military or armed forces is that the armed forces knows whom their enemies are when they go to, on a battlefield go into a battlefield they know the enemies whom their targets are they are fighting humans they know their enemies but when you are a preacher of the gospel you don't just fight enemies you fight principalities and powers you wrestle against spiritual wickedness you wrestle against your family members you wrestle against friends and close associates you wrestle against a lot of people that speaks ill of you so that's why it is very very risky and you don't even know whom to f how to fight the worst fight is fighting your family members you know because how do you fight a family but it's easy for a family to fight you it's easy to f for a family to attack you call you a man of them but you being a servant of God how do you fight but I've seen so many families suffering because they fought the wrong battle. You know, when you go through the Bible days, even the time of Joseph, you saw how they fought Joseph. The family fought Joseph because of a mere dream, a mere vision that Joseph had. And they suffered the consequences without Joseph uttering a word. Joseph did not pray against his siblings. Joseph prayed not against them, but they suffered the consequences. So it is very wrong to wrestle a servant of God. I, I want to tell you something. Men of God are humans. They are not superhumans, but they are humans that made themselves available for God to use them. So you have to be careful. You know, when you see them preaching or you see the power of God manifesting through them, that does not make them exceptional. They are prone to sin. They are subject to sinning. Because they are standing on a slippery floor. But I want to beg you, don't be that person that will pull a servant of God down. Because the consequences is worse than death. I can tell you that. I can guarantee you that. Don't be that person that will take honor of pulling down a man of God. You know, when you go closer to a man of God, there are things you will understand that they are humans. They make mistakes. As a human being, they are subject to human errors. And that does not make them less a servant of God. You will understand maybe, oh, the way they laugh irritates you. You know, maybe the way they eat, chew, stuff irritates you. You may even understand a lot of things they do irritates you because you are closer to them. That's why I tell some people, don't get too close. Don't be too comfortable when you are hanging out with a pastor. Do not forget, when you are hanging out with your pastor, don't go there 
to try to understand, examine him, to study him. No, 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 no. Don't go there to study him, but study the God he serves. Study the Messiah, the power of God behind the man. Don't try to unmask the, the, uh, the, the, the man in the man. Try to unmask the spirit behind the man. You know, so a lot of people <clears throat> are suffering today because of um, their utterances against the servant of God. I'm going to share a story, but that will be at the end of this message because I'm going to make this, I'm going to personal, personalize this and to help somebody come out of, um, of, of, uh, of a curse, inflicted curse upon yourself. Now, let's, the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2, when you read from verse 23 to 24, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to share this story, you know, about Elisha, prophet Elisha, you know, how he killed 42 kids. These are children that mocked him. 42 children, it, uh, 42 children, innocent children that mocked him. They mocked a man of God. You know, he was going up to the mountain and they say, hey, you bad head, you bad headed man, you know, go up to the mountain. It was just a mere word, but he got provoked. They mocked a man of God, say, you bad headed man. I don't know what it, you know, you know, what it meant in his times, in, in Elisha's days to be called a bad headed man, because that really angered him, that really grieved him. Imagine somebody calling me a bad headed man. I don't think that will, you know, cause me that much anger to take 42 lives to take 42 lives but he did he did i mean i live in a generation you know growing up when you call somebody a goat the person gets mad calling somebody a goat can attract death sentence growing up but now people people are happy when you call them goats so you can see the world um, um, evolves you know things changes so perhaps then calling somebody a bad a bad dead person meant something terrible you know, but now when you say you're bad dead, it's like you're losing some hairs, right? So, so it was growing up, call somebody a goat. The person will get mad. The person can kill you for calling him a goat. But now when you call somebody a goat, they will celebrate and they'll say thank you. They will love you for calling them a goat. So things change. So be careful the words, the choice of words you use on a servant of God is very important. For your own sake, don't get too close. He is God's vessel. God disciplines his children. I don't think there is any man of God on earth that committed worse sin than David. No man committed. He was an adulterer. He was a fornicator. He was a murderer. But guess what? He was a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. He, in fact, the genealogy of Jesus began from such man. David, no man in the Bible, no man in the scriptures committed what crime than David, but he was a man after God's own heart. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how else to quantify this. Men of God are humans, subject to making human error. Perhaps, you know, on social media these days, you can drag them, you can, you can make them go viral for the wrong reason, but in the secret place, they have cried to the Lord and the Lord has forgiven them. Just as it happened in the times of, of, uh, of David, you know, he killed Uriah, slept with the wife. And what happened? When he prayed to God, God forgave him. Perhaps people were still saying, oh, look at this man, you killed your servant and you took the wife. They were still mocking him. But he was at peace with God. Most men of God you criticize for sins they have committed or for the iniquities they have done, they have cried to the Lord and God had forgiven them. So be careful. God is the righteous judge. Don't judge a man of God. Now, in the part two of this message, I'm going to share a story, a real life story I don't want you to miss. A real life story that almost took a life of a woman. That almost killed because, because of what? She mocked a man of God and she castigated the wife of a man of God that took her that took her backward and was at the verge of taking her life until God showed up because of her children. God bless you. I'll see you in part two of this message. Shalom.